TZKN is uh, within the soil protection and rehabilitation for food security, better known also as SEVO. And we have, I would say, quite a history in terms of using ICT and digitalization in the context of agriculture. The impacts of climate change are impacting especially the small-scale farmers heavily and uh, as I have written here uh, for example 5.7 million hectares were affected uh, for example in 2009 due to 2009 for due to the late arrival of the monsoon. So the monsoon in India is the main event in terms of uh, agriculture and the production which goes along with and if the monsoon uh, comes right in time you have a good harvest and if the monsoon stays as it's supposed to stay uh, you have good harvest but if there is a s smallest deviation in terms when it's onset if there is a break in between or if it, there is a delay uh, the whole system itself somehow struggles and uh, agriculture is suffering heavily and the farmers of course especially the small-scale farmers so the, the incidents due to extreme weather events have increased significantly by 10 times from 1930 to 2010 and of course um, the effects the negative effects of the uh, impacts of climate change um, are magnified by the intensive agriculture which is there. Um, in addition, soil nutrition, and this is the aspect of the new project I mentioned, and soil fertility became a main issue. We had a green revolution in the 80s in uh, India to ensure that uh, enough food is available for the population. Of course, and this has to pledge the soils itself in addition. So we have a combination of climate change, impact of climate change, a combination of uh, soil depletion and soil fertility. And this is not the end yet. The vision of the uh, Ministry of Agriculture or the need is to double the farmer's income uh, till 2022. So this is very ambitious. And the question is, how to do this? Does technology itself play a role here? And can technology help to uh, achieve this goal? Nowadays, most of the farmers uh, could be able or would be able to, achieve, uh, to, to get information on uh, the climate forecast, forecast, weather forecast, as well as on best practices uh, for um, keeping up the soil fertility or um, rehabilitate soil fertility. However, there is no clear understanding where do I get this information off and there are various informations coming. So we have government in India which has uh, SMS portal so they are sending free SMS to the farmers. So there are or there were partly also private companies who try to make a business out, business out of that to provide information, customer tailored information to the farmers on farmer on best practices in the farm but also along with weather forecast. There's an extension system there and many other sources of information. However, the information are not combined itself and you have to be active to get this information on your own from various channels, combine it and take your conclusion for yourself. So that's where we stepped in um, with the Network for Information on Climate Exchange. We call it NICE. This is a tool we have developed and that's now the ICT part where we would like to contribute to the vision to, of uh, 2022. It's a web-based open source platform and um, it's API based so we have and with a modular approach so we have different components which can be used and combined depending on what is actually needed and of course the technical part and this already goes in the direction of the experience the technical part itself was not a big deal I would say the biggest challenge was the institutional setup and I think that's where we face the most challenges if you talk about ICT solutions, whether it's in the agriculture sector or others. So what happened? In 2013, we started with developing this uh, uh, NICE application. 
uh, along with the industry partner from the IT. It was uh, Entity Data, the biggest telecommunication company in, Ge in not in Germany, worldwide actually. So they had a kind of uh, CSR program, corporate social responsibility program, and uh, provided us stuff, IT stuff from the company, and. Um, cooperated with us to develop this solution. As a result, we got a really uh, nice uh, pro and professional and working IT solution, which helps to collect, validate, disseminate information. And this comes along with a quality check cycle. Because what we found out is that a lot of this information, which are disseminated to farmers in India, first of all, vary in content, and secondly, there is no guarantee that the information itself are correct. So what we have included there is a loop that each and every content must be approved by governmental by a governmental institution. So this, of course, is uh, all online based, and um, so we have set up a kind of a network of in governmental institutions, universities, and for and most important with a main implementation partner. But this um, I would like to highlight later. So what's happened basically is that CCKNIA, we had a four year uh, project duration. And of course, if you start with a uh, digital development, you need certain time first, of course, to understand what's happening. And secondly, with the development itself. Project duration itself, for really implementing the software and capacitate the partners along with the farmers and the extension services took us almost, I would say, two and a half years. And this is still very short. So we were facing the challenge then basically towards the end that there was no willingness and, or the need was not seen by, um, by, the, by, by us or by that's by said by GSZ and BMZ to continue this project, right? So we have heavily invested, we have pushed these things forward, and suddenly there was an end. So what we had to do is to think uh, in different terms, and that's where we came into contact with the ProSol project, the Cebu Initiative, and said, well, look, this is a software solution we have, and this software solution is not uh, specific to any topic. And that's what we had already in the beginning in mind, because we wanted to have a, a knowledge management solution, which can be used for any thematic topic with a clear focus on quality, as I mentioned before, and with uh, dissemination channels. So Prosal basically took it over and adjusted it to their needs uh, for advising farmers on uh, soil and, and nutrition, and uh, used it in a way that it fits to their best needs. So in that sense, we were able basically to transform or tra um, hand over the whole system to the ProSol project along, and this is most importantly, with the partner. So, and this was also one of the biggest challenge <clears throat> to find the right partner. Who is the right partner? Is it the Ministry of Agriculture? In our case, it was the implementation partner. But realities have shown that the Ministry of Agriculture well, on the policy level, they're an excellent partner. But in terms of really going to the implementation, really to the gas root, uh, grassroots, well, we had our trouble there. And what we found um, was uh, the Manage, the um, Institute for, uh, which is basically responsible for the extension services all over India. And when they saw the system, they said, well, this is exactly what we need. And uh, with Manage, we were able to roll out the whole uh, agenda we have planned within our project to 25,000 farmers in the CCKN project period. And now under SEBO, it comes to 150,000 farmers. I think uh, most uh, important was that we follow the digital principles uh, for development. So we have these nine principles on how to best implement digital projects. And it really nicely guides you from the very initial step design with the user, understand the ecosystem, use and reuse existing institutional as well technical solutions, and so on and so on. You can look at it. And it really helped to guide us through and 
made the solution in a way open that it can be adjusted to the new context. And if you talk about digitalization, things are changing very quickly. And it also helped to make, uh, uh, to adapt to new ways of, for example, also new technical ways, for example, for dissemination. So suddenly we realized a lot of these farmers are communicating through social media apps. So what we were able through this modular approach, which is really suggested by these digital principles, well, we easily connected then, for example, Telegram and could disseminate it quickly uh, information, not through SMS anymore, rather than using Telegram in that case. And that was really nice to use and, and, and it's really nice to use. Quality assurance, I mean, this is the unique selling point, I would say, of the system that we can say whatever information which is disseminated is due to the institutional structure we have set up, validated by the government and valid to be disseminated and it is supposed to be correct, at least on the political side. Um, partner with the ICT industry, I think the bigger, the better in that case. However, of course, you have also to understand what's the interest of the, the uh, ICT industry, whether it is to promote their own product, yeah, uh, when we, uh, which leads to licensing costs uh, later on, and uh, or is it out of CSR, for example, like in our case. So you really try to need to get the best of the best in that case to quickly develop something. And of course, the political agenda, the digital agenda of the government of India helped very much. Also to make uh, our partner, the Ministry of Agriculture itself, understanding why they need to step forward with uh, ICT-based solutions. Here are some impact figures. We measured those. Um, and I think they're quite impressive uh, in terms of our outreach and in terms of qualities. Looking at these figures, it would be not possible to do it without ICT, to reach such a large amount of farmers with that kind of information in that quality. So the impact uh, counts here and impact is in this case only possible or that this kind of impact is only possible by applying ICT based tools. What have been the biggest challenges? Well, honestly spoken, when we started in 2030, uh, GIZ was quite blank in terms of ICT solutions. So when Navin and myself started uh, in 2013, we were checking in here in the Fach- und Methodenbereich, is there anybody who knows about digitalization? Well, there was this KC, uh, knowledge center, competence center about knowledge management, but this is a completely different context. How about data protection? I mean, all these topics which are popping up now, we had to solve it on our own that time. This has changed dramatically and I would say now the soil for good ICT solution is fertile. Next uh, challenge was uh, to find suitable staff and, and, and project team members which were able to understand both worlds, the ICT world and the agriculture world. And I think that's the challenge we are facing mostly also in different in the other sectors that we need a cross-cutting understanding um, in terms of what are the potentials of ICT and how to relate it and utilize it in for the context you're working in for the particular subject. Capacities, capacities on the partner side, I mentioned initially, we were really struggling with the highest level. Now you talk with the ministry and the ministry say, yeah, we want it. However, you say, can I have access to your server? Can we put our system on your server? It's a clear no, yeah, due to security reasons and so on, and, and uh, processes for administration. So you really have to understand from the very beginning on where do I place my system and who owns it finally and uh, in terms of um, who is running it and pay finally also for it. And does this institution have the capacities to maintain it also through personnel? The next challenge uh, we had since we were quite blank, honestly spoken, is the gender balance. What we found out quite late, and it should also talk about uh, problems we faced and mistakes we made uh, to make us learning of this, is the gender aspect. What we found out that we were not able to reach women as much as we wanted it to have. Um, we tried it with self-help groups. We have this kind of community 
at community level self help groups, women self help groups. Um, we try to engage them. And whatever road we went through digitalization, uh, through applying ICT, reaching women was the most difficult. I really encourage you, once you're facing the question whether you want to use digitalization as such within your project context, think about it and from the very beginning on and make sure that you have a right solution. Here, the, the slate used this kind of uh, information system and a tablet, which we um, also provided to some of the extension workers to educate the children finally and to get access to further information beyond agriculture. This showed us beyond our scope, what is the potential of digitalization, access to knowledge. And she demonstrated quite actively that this is possible, especially also in rural areas. And through digitalization, they can have access to a complete new world of knowledge. We have some questions. The first question was um, from Dominique. Um, he asked, um, you mentioned that you use Telegram to send out mm -hmm. messages. Um, could we also use other messages such as WhatsApp? The reason why we use Telegram is two, uh, twofold. One reason was that Telegram opens APIs. So you can feed in information through your web application, through your so uh, server directly to the Telegram. Uh, so it's open. That was the one reason. Second reason we found out that most of our target group used also Telegram. So it was a quite uh, a neat fit and in that way we just use it and it worked out uh, greatly, I have to say. Because, uh, and it's also a cost uh, factor. You don't pay anything. If you, pay, if you send out SMSs, uh, it costs you something. Telegram is for free. Problem I do see with WhatsApp and let's say Facebook communicator and all these other uh, social media communicators, uh, it's a completely closed system. You can't have an access and you can't steer the content unless you really copy and paste it from uh, uh, into this tool itself. In terms of data protection, um, yes, it's a topic, <laughs> I have to say. However, um, in that case, the data protection law, um, which is locally, uh, well, it applies because the whole system lies with the partner and in the partner's hands. And um, in that sense, uh, we were quite out of the, the problem, let's say it like that, uh, that we have to follow the European, or in that time, the German data protection law. So my recommendation is also whatever you do, try to do it in the name and on the premises and on the zero of your partner to avoid this question and the problem you might encounter. However, I would like also to um, emphasize that this data protection law is, uh, is in place for good reason. And uh, we should really handle information, especially and in personalized information, responsible. By the third quarter of this year, there will be also responsible data guideline from, coming from GIZ, which guides you also on a, on a moralic side, how to deal with personalized data. There was a question from Laura and Caroline that goes in the same direction. They ask, um, after you made these experiences that it was difficult to reach women, so did you find out um, what we could do better? Actually, I don't have an answer to this, but the question I might raise is ICT the, the best way to reach women, uh, which I would say in our case it was not. Yeah, So there are better ways to reach and uh, it might be uh, through personal interaction, uh, through uh, extension workers uh, with a direct interaction with women. because. Uh, if you look who's having the smartphones, and these are mostly the young boys yeah, in the family. And of course, they're not saying, well, I have information here, the weather, it's going to rain in two days, and tell this to uh, their mother or to their sister, for example. If you want to use ICT to reach out to women, um, I think it's difficult uh, or might be not the right way. What, is, what are the main contents of the information sharing and who is the moderator of the information mm -hmm. Yeah, so main content is uh, um, basically uh, agriculture advisories, such as the extension service is providing combined with market information and weather forecast. So uh, the main moderator are the district um, offices of the Ministry of Agriculture and 
they are supported uh, by the local universities um, who are in charge for the quality aspects and in addition with the meteorologic department, the local meteorologic department. So the idea or the, the, the good thing is through this decentralized information or the knowledge management system that you can tap this information from various sources and combine it into one comprehensive uh, small text which is then sent out. How did you scope with the technical shortage, like limited electricity or also data coverage? We, we analyzed this uh, beforehand in our project areas and found on a new that like 30% of our project area is out of data connectivity. So what we did, we tried to uh, compensate it through a technical solution that the app we developed is uh, having an offline and online functionality. So once you're getting online, you synchronize all your data. And once you're offline, you have basically the last synchronized status. There was one more question to Florian, um, and this is from Cameroon. She asked if the solution was developed to increase the productivity or and the commercial commercialization. It was basically uh, uh, to in not to increase the to to safeguard basically uh, farmers to uh, um, harvest what they are farming. So that was the very initial idea, and to to uh, provide a information to cope with the impact of the uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. However, okay. however, in that context now, and, and Navin can help here, I think better now it goes towards increasing the, the productivity since we're talking also about soil information. Now, Lara, it's your, the state is yours now. I'm going to present a project or actually a couple of projects that I've been working on in Uganda for around four and a half years, starting in 2013 and uh, which was followed by a couple of, of follow-up projects that kind of um, go in a similar direction but take the idea a little forward. Access to finance, uh, to proper financial services for smallholders, as in most countries, is a huge problem in Uganda, um, especially relevant in the coffee sector, which is a hugely important uh, agricultural sector in Uganda. We found that many, many uh, smallholders actually site or pre-sell their harvest before, uh, before harvest time at a much lower price, um, just because they need to cover immediate cash needs for school fees, for medical expenses. And uh, if they do that, they do it far below the market price. We, we did a study uh, to kind of calculate the loss these farmers actually make due to, to pre-selling. And uh, we converted this to uh, equivalent monthly interest rates and, and we reached amounts of uh, losses of 140% per month, which is just unimaginable. And um, we said, okay, what can we do? I mean, what is the reason? Why do farmers do this? They need cash and they don't have the, the proper financial services in place. And at the same time, many farmers are actually not even aware of these losses because they don't keep records and they don't... Um, they don't calculate through basically the losses they make. The other problem we had was that financing smallholders uh, for financial institutions is a very risky business. There is a lack of collateral, of securities, costs of outreach are very, very high. And there is also a lack of adequate financial products that actually are adapted to the value chain. On the other side, um, also uh, farmers had had difficulties in, in, in understanding how financial services work, how they can access them and how they uh, maybe come up with alternative also collateral security strategies to, to access financial services through financial institutions uh, aside from informal service providers. After a couple of years of really trying hard to bring services, financial services and service providers to farmers, we said, okay, let's do it differently. We actually started a, a cooperation project with the private sector, with the German uh, software company SAP, uh, where um, we introduced a supply chain management tool, a smartphone-based application that, that was developed in the Western African context. Um, that one was taken, adapted to the Ugandan coffee sector and introduced in a coffee farmers association in Uganda. And the way it worked was basically 
The smartphone app was introduced on a parking station level. So under the umbrella of the association, we had a number of cooperatives with parking stations where farmers delivered their coffee to. This was kind of the level where we introduced the application and where managers who took over coffee deliveries from smallholder farmers, entered each and every delivery in a, a smartphone-based application, and basically all subsequent transactions from uh, starting from processing to actually sales to the exporter and payments. There was also a mobile payment functionality included, as well as SMS receipts to the individual farmers. So we had already one huge uh, benefit, which was increased transparency in the entire supply chain, and basically starting to manage a huge farmer association um, comprising of uh, more than 50,000 farmers moving in some of their cooperatives from a paper-based system that was very time and cost intensive to a more transparent digital system. Introducing mobile payments that actually reduce the risk of transferring cash in the field to, uh, to a less risky digital system. And uh, in the next step, um, and this is where, where we came from as agricultural finance program, in having the challenges of, of, of lack of collateral and securities among smallholders in mind, we said, okay, what else do we get out of this centralized digitized data? In fact, we have proof of incomes for all the farmers that are registered on the system and that deliver regularly through one of the cooperative um, parking stations of the Farmer Association. So um, we actually started a cooperation project with two financial institutions who agreed to use the digital transaction data as a proof of income and basically as a, as a basis for risk calculation. So the process was as follows. The farmer opened a bank account and applied for a loan. Financial institution did a loan appraisal using the digital transaction data that was given to them with the farmer's consent, then later dispersed the loan via mobile money um, or in kind um, via inputs. Um, and the farmer, when he later delivered coffee to the bulking station at harvest time, basically repaid the loan through coffee as uh, the cooperative later basically sent back the money to the financial institution's account. We saw a couple of benefits by introducing uh, digital solutions uh, in that sense. Um, on the one side, we, we got the, the proof of income data for individual farmers, which eased um, financial institutions in actually serving these clients as, as, as they had a feeling for them. They knew who they are, they knew they had an income, they knew um, that these people are, are, are regular suppliers of coffee and, and will repay the loan most likely. And secondly, um, using mobile money to actually disperse loans um, would also re reduce their, their transaction costs in the field. We had a couple of successes. Um, we managed to register 24,000 smallholder coffee farmers on the system. Farmers were trained in financial literacy, uh, farmers opened bank accounts, and we also managed to disburse loans through our partner financial institutions. But looking at the amount uh, of loans dispersed, the project, I have to say, ended in 2016. So within two years, 950 bank accounts were opened and 800 loans dispersed. But looking at the total number of 24,000 farmers, during the first uh, introduction, introduction stage of, of actually introducing uh, the smartphone-based application in, within the Coffee Farmer Association, we had the very obvious technical issues of network power, the usability. Most of the farmers we worked with had never seen a smartphone before, so it was just, you know, the obvious challenges you'd expect when introducing uh, an ICT solution in such an environment. Um, I uh, remember Florian mentioning, mentioning it took around two and a half years to introduce the system. I think we also worked on that for around two and a half years. Um, at a later stage then, when, when moving into the financial services part of the project, um, we also saw that financial institutions were very, very hesitant to move into the world of digitization, I would say. so working on mobile money functionalities, integrating these, and also working on digital data, 
uh, needs integration uh, into their core banking system, which was just a huge investment they were not re ready to make at that stage, um, which basically led to the fact that on the financial institution side, many of the, the paper-based uh, traditional processes were maintained and led to uh, limited outreach, so they never reached the full potential. We uh, kind of learned a couple of lessons. We saw building up a model of agricultural finance with or without ICT just takes time and it only works through scale. But scale means uh, reaching scale is not possible without uh, introducing digital solutions. So um, especially in that field of reaching out to smallholders, it just can't be profitable for a financial institution if they don't take that step and do the, do the necessary investments to, to go digital to reach that famous last mile. Um, on the other side, we also saw introducing an ICT solution alone is not going to solve our problem. So it's really what we need here is a comprehensive approach. We, we need agricultural aspects, we need financial services aspects or finance aspects, and we need digital systems to make the whole thing work. We really saw these, these challenges are so interdependent, so we need to also come up with, with interdependent solutions, let's say, which led us to the idea um, of starting a new project based on the previous ones. Uh, we are now working on a strategic alliance, which is basically a big uh, public-private uh, partnership project with five private sector partners coming from agriculture, from IT, but also from financial services. Um, and to really look at the issue systemically and comprehensively. So um, we are now working on inde with independent farm groups on different value chains. So that's coffee, cotton and banana. We have developed an integrated training approach that really combines agriculture and financial trainings as well as uh, aspects of, of, of IT, let's say. So that starts from data protection because there was, well, just raising awareness on, on, on what happens if data is being collected, who is it going to be shared with, what are possible consequences, uh, but also training on how to use mobile money effectively, what are the costs involved, what, what are the risks involved. Um, and also to start testing different uh, agricultural finance approaches, um, including digital components. So um, we are now working um, still with one very traditional financial institution that is using digital banking to reach out to, to banana farmers in Western Uganda. But at the same time, we have also taken it basically a step further um, where we link in uh, off-takers of agricultural produce as financial service providers. And you don't think of it as contract farming, but rather as, uh, in fact, building up small financial institutions within the infrastructure of agricultural buyers. So we do that in coffee and in cotton. In coffee, it's basically for inputs, fertilizer. We managed to disperse around 800 loans in two years. I have to say with that partner in the coffee sector now, um, the project is running since a little more than a year and we have already dispersed more than 2,000 loans. So that is kind of the span that is possible by taking the last step to really go digital and um, make use of the possibilities that are, that are there. Um, we are doing a similar thing on asset finance in cotton in, um, in northern Uganda, where we also rely on a digital um, system to actually uh, keep track of the loans and repayments. Um, and that is also uh, starting on very, very well. Again, kind of the different approaches we are now taking in, 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 in digital agricultural finance and also, again, pointing out that the digital solution alone, and I think this is a tendency that I see now within many GIZ projects, that there is a need to do something digital because it's fancy and because it sounds great and because it's cool. But... Um, kind of taking it from another direction. You start with a digital solution and you look, you look for a problem that could be solved with it. Um, we found that uh, we need to do it the other way around. You start with a problem and you see if a, if a digital solution can actually help in solving that problem and can actually um, provide an additional benefit to the project. So really come up with a comprehensive 
strategy uh, where the digital solution is, is rooted in, in, in basically the entire project framework, which also helps later uh, to take, um, take the step towards sustainability, let's say, because something we also observe is that many digital solutions are pushed and developed within a pro GIZ project that has, where basically there is no partner there to take over once the project ends. So really, um, from the start, thinking of a commercial setup where the solution can be taken over at a later stage, and I think is, is absolutely necessary. And we see this now in our agricultural finance approach, where we have the agricultural off-takers, as well as the financial service providers, kind of having a, a deeply rooted interest in, 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 in using those digital solutions and also maintain them once the project is over. You can see there are still questions popping up and also comments. I just want to sum up. We had a bit of a side discussion in the chat on this gender issue. One, one um, big thing is obviously that if we talk about ICT solutions, we need a proper gender targeting strategies and then there was a question about how should these strategies look like and then the answer was well and what they found out in India was that these um, groups where women work together and like self self ad or sub help groups um, that this could be very helpful and also that um, women especially um, are very uh, good advisors if it comes to being an advisor so we should definitely target further in our strategies this um, gender aspect and then there was another interesting side discussion on the quality of soil and, and if you community uh, if you communicate also information on the how you can improve soil quality and um, then Navin again explained um, yeah, a bit about who actually decided on the content and he said that the kind and quality of advisories that were sent out had been developed by the mainstream universities and local research and extension agencies based on the local context where there is and the farmers needs. So there we can see again how important it is to um, yeah, really focus on the needs of the farmers and on the local conditions. There was a in taking about the, talking about the scalability of any ICT solutions and especially yours now, is this approach also replicable in a different country? Taking transactional data of farmers and using them as a proof of income definitely is scalable and is an approach we are now also trying in, in, in different countries. We are just um, working on a project proposal uh, for Indonesia and Mexico, in fact. Um, where we want to come up with a similar approach to agricultural finance and um, we're also talking about a similar approach in the Philippines and then I'm not saying it has the exactly same ICT solution but you know coming with that approach in mind and somehow collecting this data on a small order and it doesn't have to be one or the other system but I think there are many ways of collecting this kind of data and then using it uh, for access to finance, yes, certainly. The NICE system as it is can be of course also used, freely used, it's under creative common license so whatever you want to do with it, wherever, it's up to you. And I think also India can support you very much in terms of implementation, in terms of advice, also through the managed institution itself, this governmental institution for extension. So they actually also have an experience, or they have intensive experience in advising partner countries on uh, implementing ICT uh, for the agriculture and uh, extension services. Whoever wants to use it, feel free to contact Navin and he will facilitate further. And there was one more question to Lara. Did you utilize this GIZ approach, contract farming as inclusive business model in your project? Um, not as such. In our project, we're working with uh, private sector partners who um, also implement part of the project. Um, and a lot on the part of um, how they um, how they work or source from their farmers is basically on their end. None of them is doing traditional contract farming or refers to their way of sourcing as contract farming. So there are no contracts between farmers and off-takers. Um, and also the loans can be repaid in cash. So farmers 
or the cooperatives can, in theory, sell to whoever they want to and repay the loan independently from their sales. So in that sense, it's 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 really not the, the contract farming in the classical sense, I believe. I've, I've seen the handbooks and <laughs> I've read them and I have kind of internally internalized the, the, the lessons learned. But I think in, in, in our case, it's a bit of a different scenario. Before we close, I want to announce one more thing. Um, we recently published published our new SDG study. You probably heard about it. It's called Harnessing the Chances of Digitalization for Rural Development. And in this, um, in the next weeks, we will come back especially to the members of the SNID Asia because we want to find out what kind of ICT solutions you're using in your agriculture projects. And this is then supposed to be kind of an add-on for the study because, yeah, we are very interested to have a deeper insights into what happens in Asia in that field. See you next time and yeah, keep us updated. What are you doing? What kind of ICT solutions you're using? Thank you very much.